Good afternoon, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, and I'm here standing in our nave of our church today as we celebrate on this 27th day of April, the festival day in commemoration of Christina Rosita. Rosita. I'll tell you a little bit more about this amazing woman and her time in just a few moments. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we celebrate this day. We are using the Book of Common Prayer of the Episcopal Tradition, page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 103. Please join me in, in our leading our prayer or in the silence of your own time and where you may be. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 84, found on page 707 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 707. How, please join me in reading and reciting this out loud or in the silence of your meditation. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts, my soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallows a nest where she lay, lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find its pl a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the Lord of gods will reveal himself to Zion, in Zion, Lord God of hosts. Hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. O oh, good, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O oh, Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 19 through 23. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is you in you, is your darkness, how great is the darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was saying today, we are celebrating the festival day in commemoration of Christina Rositi. She was born on December 5th, 1830. And she was an English po poet laureate of her time. She wrote both romantic and devotional and children's poems. She is best known for her poem called The Goblin Market and also the romantic poem called Remember. But most of us probably remember her 
and I have also sung her beautiful carol in the bleak midwinter. I stand before you today in front of this beautiful stained glass window for the Boswell window with the angel standing with us today to remind us that God's grace and word comes to us in so many different ways and through poetry and people like Christina Rositi who help us understand God in a different way through God's words and people using people to help us explain some of the mystery of the world. When, when Christina was 14 years of age, she suffered from uh, anxiety, terrible anxiety and depression and also had other health issues. It was during this period of time that she devoted herself to the works of the Oxford movement and the Anglican movement uh, within the English church. And in 1859, uh, she started to dedicate herself and to volunteer at St. Mary Magdalene House of Charity. This was a house for those who were former prostitutes trying to get off the streets and trying to make a good living again. At the age of 17, or at the age of seven, she started writing her poetry. Then when she was 18, she had her very first poem published. My daughter, Claire, is also a poet, and she also writes lots of poems. And so it's never too early to start writing poetry, or too late for that matter. In, as we begin uh, this week, in many ways, on this Tuesday, on the 27th day of April, Christina uh, Rositi reminds us of all the wonders of how God places God's place in our lives. So where do we put our treasures? Where are you putting your treasures today? Are we squandering them and holding them tightly? Or are we asking God for right direction to do God's will? Christina uh, Rositi died in, in, on this date in 18, excuse me, in this, this year in 1894 in December from cancer. So we also remember all those who are suffering from cancer today and give thanks for the, the inspiration that Christina gives to all of us by her poetry. Amen. Let us continue our prayers now on page 106 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, my sisters and brothers, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. We'll use the traditional Lord's Prayer on the left column. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. O oh God, whom heaven cannot hold, you inspired Christina Rositi to express the mystery of the incarnation through her poems. Help us to follow her example in giving our hearts to Christ, who is love and who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers as people of God. Please join me in turning to page three, uh, page 387, page 387. Prayers of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray, Lord, for the community of all Christian believers, that we may all be one. We pray for all uh, for, we grant that, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We especially give thanks for people's examples like Christina Rositi, who gave her example of her gifts of poetry, even when she was suffering. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for this United States of America. We pray, Lord God, that you may help this nation and all its leaders, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those who are inspirations, like Christina Rositi, and all poets and poets and musicians, and those who all who offer up the arts and give us beauty in different ways to express their wonders of their world. We'd like to especially remember today Margaret Morris and Bill Paxton, who celebrated their birthdays yesterday. Happy birthday to you, Bill. He's also our junior warden. We also pray for Margaret Morris. Happy birthday to her and have a wonderful blessed day. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary today, and we lift them up. We give thanks for our first responders, our fire people and police officers. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those who are working hard behind the scenes to give us our fresh water and picking up our trash. We give thanks, God, for the blessing of new spring and wonderful budding flowers and irises and dogwoods. We give thanks, O oh God. We ask your blessing to be all with all those that we care for and love and celebrate today, that our works may find favor in your sight. Give grace to your Give grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially pray, Lord, for those who are suffering from depression or anxiety. We pray and lift up all counselors and uh, those physicians who are caring for those who are suffering from those or other uh, behavioral health issues. We thank you, Lord, for our doctors and nurses who are caring for those who are physically ill, especially because of COVID-19. We pray for all those 200 people who were infected yesterday, and a couple of them were here in our own county. We give thanks, God, for the blessing of people getting vaccinated and so that we may lessen the spread of this terrible virus and its uh, terrible variants. We pray for all those who are suffering from cancer and those doctors who are caring and nurses who are caring for them. We especially pray for uh, Reverend Libby Wade, Reverend Dorothy Hartzog, Sam Wittes, for Tommy and Patty and Phil, and for my sister-in-law, Sherry Ulick. We pray for all those who are ill today. We pray for Mason, little Mason, Lori Copeland's grandson, and for her, caring for him. We pray for my nephew, John Ulick, recovering from arm surgery. We pray for my, my wife, Susie, who's suffering from her frozen shoulders. I pray for little Kevin. I pray for Reverend John Allen, Teresa Wilson, Liz Story, Reverend Nick Yeager, George Chalk, for Paul Meisinger, and Joan Heidel. We pray, oh Lord, and for all those people you'd like to post online, you're welcome to do so. We lift up all these wonderful people and ask your healing touch to be upon them. O Lord Christ, we pray for all those who are in our nursing homes and assisted living facilities, especially at Rivercrest and the Lakes and Gaither Suites. We pray, Lord, for the Episcopal Church homes in Louisville. We pray, Lord, for all those who are caretakers and those and their family members of their loved ones who are there with them at Park Crest, Parkview and uh, Heritage Manor. We lift up all these wonderful people that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray, Lord, for all those who have, who have lost loved ones this time. We especially pray for 11 people who died yesterday because of COVID-19. We pray and pause and give remember Darlene Pigford who will be laying to rest this Saturday. We ask you blessing to be with these souls as you welcome them into your loving arms in your heavenly kingdom and as we pause for a moment and remember them. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us also pray for our own needs and those of others. Again, if you'd like to post a special prayer or to 
concern, we lift them up and I will offer them as well as part of my own personal prayers. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you have a great day. Remember, you can join me again uh, tomorrow at noon for our Holy Eucharistic service. If you'd like to join us in person, you're also welcome to come here to the church if you're in town or in this area. But please join us always online at noon during the weekdays. Have Remember that God loves each and every one of you. And so do I. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed day.